The purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to create a simulation along with the attendant frequency distribution and histogram. We're going to start with this spreadsheet which has daily return information on a stock. In particular this is Apple com computer and it has daily information on the market as well. And this data extends from 1995 all the way to the end of 2014. And just to show you, I'm going to use Control Shift N to get to the end of the data. There are 5,037 lines in this data. And that's going to be important because we'll need that information when we're referring to the data. So I'm going to use Control shift home to take me right back to the top. And with this data, what we're going to do first is calculate slopes. These will be slopes that are considering 250 days trading data and calculate one for each day. Well, we can't for the first 250 because we don't have 250 prior trading days for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on down here until we get to 252 and we're going to calculate a slope and this slope is going to use the data from row 2 to row 251 we're going to calculate a market model slope which means we're regressing the return on Apple stock against the return on the market so in other words we're involving the returns in column C and column D we use the slope command to estimate this slope and the Y's are going to be a return on Apple stock. They're in C2 to C251. And then we have the X's, and they're in D2 to D251. Now we're not locking these in because we want to be able to take this slope calculation and bring it down in the cells. We'll do that so it'll take the most recent 250 days as we do that. So I'm going to hit enter and show you that as I go down one cell that we now have the next 250 days and so forth. So I'm going to click in the lower right hand corner to extend this all the way to the end. So now we've got a bunch of slopes. I'm going to take this worksheet, rename it, I'm going to call it data. I'd like a nice short name so that I can refer to it in the next part of what we're doing. So now we've got the slopes. Now we're going to go into another sheet, and I'm going to call this one Selected. i change that name. Selected. And what we're going to do is select some of these slopes. I'm going to start just in A5, and I'm going to select a slope, Rand between, and I'm going to choose a number between 200 52, excuse me, and 5037. Now, if you have a different length of data, then of course you want to adjust that. So I have the random number between these two, and it's 4585. So what that means is we're going to go back on the data sheet, look for the slope that's numbered 4585, and then choose that slope. Now every time we change this worksheet, another random number is selected. So it's going to change from 4585 to some other number. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to, so I'm going to put in here a random number so you know what is what here. And then the slope that corresponds to that random number. Now what I mean by that is here we have random number 3540. That means we're going to go into the data file and we're going to try to fit, find that particular one. How we're going to do this is we're going to number these. So let me insert a column and number each one of these. I'm just going to start at 1 and then I'm going to add one to that. And now we have all of these numbered. So 
So we would look to number 3554, or if the random number is 26, we'd look across here, and so on. So these are going to be the numbers that we're going to call. So I'm just going to label that as number. So in the selected, we're going to have a random number somewhere between 252 and 5037. And then we're going to find the corresponding slope. So it'll look for the number 3741, and then we'll find the slope using the VLOOKUP command. So go back to the data here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a slope. The slopes are in column F. So let me label that just so you know which is which. So column F. Now column F doesn't have anything in it until we get down to 252. And then it has the market model slopes in it. So now I'm going to go over here to select it and actually select the slope that corresponds to the random number. We use VLOOKUP to do this. We're going to look up whatever value is to the left. The table array is data, which is the worksheet name, exclamation mark. And we're going to be in F. Um, looking in A252 through F5037. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock that in because we're going to be copying this. So this is the array. Now the column number that we want, well we're going to, what's going to happen in VLOOKUP? It'll look down the very first column, which happens to be A in our data array that we specified. So you have A, B, C, D, E, F. So we're looking at column 6. In the VLOOKUP, it looks down the very first column of your data array, finds the match corresponding to what you had it match up with, and then you count how many columns that you need to go over to. So you need to be in column 6. That should produce a slope. Now how many of these random numbers do we need? We'll really need as many as we want. If you're going to do a true simulation, you probably want to need quite a few of these. I'm just going to go ahead and get a couple hundred of these, a few hundred. Now yeah, let's say 500 of these just to make it more manageable. So these are 500 random numbers and their corresponding slopes. The random numbers are all between the 252, which is where the slopes start, and 5037, which is where the data ends. So now we have 500 of these that we chose at random. Now, if I hit F9 right now, I get a different set of random numbers and a different set of slopes. So now let's go ahead and see what we have in terms of the frequency distribution. So we're going to go into the next, oh, start a new sheet. And let me just start over here and put in maximum and minimum. And let me find the maximum of the slopes in the random sample. And that's going to be in the selected worksheet. And it's going to be in B5 to B504. And I'm going to lock these in so I'll be able to copy them down further. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy that and just change that to minimum. So I have a minimum and a maximum. So now we start the frequency distribution. In the frequency distribution, we have a lower bound and an upper bound. Go ahead and wrap these so that I can see them better. And we're going to have a count. So now if the lower bound is going to be the lowest value and that's right here. So I point to that cell. The upper bound 
is going to be based upon the lower bound plus how much what proportion of the data we want in that particular bin. A bin is just a range of data. So think of it as different bins and we're putting things into bins, throwing balls into bins or something. So the upper bound, well let's say we want to have 10 different bins. In that case, the upper bound is going to be the lower bound plus the difference between the maximum and the minimum and I'm locking these in using F4 divided by 10 so that will give me 10 bins and as an equal sign it should be a plus sign there Sorry. so now I have an upper bound and a lower bound the, in the next bin the, upper, the lower bound is the same as the upper bound in the previous one And then we're going to take this and copy it. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy these cells so that we have 10 bins. And if we did it right, the maximum over here in cell D7 should be the maximum for the upper bound, for the highest bin. The next thing we do is count. We count the observations, and to count them, we're going to use the count if s function. Count if s, it's asking the criteria range. That is going to be the where we find the data. It's in the selected worksheet. It's in the data range B5 to B504. I'm going to lock these in so that I can use these again, copy them. The criteria, we want it greater than the lower bound, so we're going to use quotes to indicate the arithmetic operator, greater than, and we're going to combine that, which is concatenate with the ampersand, whatever the lower bound is. So that's saying anything greater than 0.42447 in this particular case. And then we repeat the range again, And now we're going to say less than the upper bound. Now we've locked in the data range. We have not locked in the upper lower bounds because we want those to change if we copy this particular count down that this particular function downward. One thing to note though is that we have to make sure in the lowest bin that we incorporate the lowest value because that's where we got our minimum and then when we get to the highest bin we have to make sure we account for the highest value because that's set up by design with our maximum value so what we're going to do is greater than or equal to that's what greater than and then accompanied by an equal sign does for us so we do that here and then we copy this down and then we'll make one slight adjustment in the last bin. We'll say less than or equal to the highest value. Now every time we hit F9, this will change. Now what we do is we take these counts and we create a chart. Put this right over here. And this is going to be a histogram. And in this histogram, we want to indicate the height is going to be the number of observations, and that's automatic here, the way we've constructed it. And right now we've indicated the bins 1 through 10. If we want something more descriptive, we'll need to create a description here. So I'm going to go to the left here, and there's several ways to do this, but I'm going to use concatenate command. And what we're going to concatenate is the lower bound, the word two, the spaces on either side, and the upper bound. Now this is not going to look pretty to begin with because we're going to have so many significant digits it's not going to be very useful. But I'll show you how to clean that up in just a moment. So all we're doing is taking the two values, the lower bound, the upper bound, 
and we're concatenating them to the word two in between. Now this looks pretty ugly, so what we'll do is we'll clean it up with the text command. Text allows you to format the value. And what I'm going to do for the format is 0.00, .00 and that means represent it with two decimal places. Now if these were percents, we'd put a percent sign in. If it was dollars, we'd put dollars. So you can specify the format by using that text command. And then we go ahead, comma. And now we do the same thing. And done. Now we go ahead and copy the downward. And we can take the histogram, design, select data, edit, grab these as labels. And we now have a histogram, and every time we hit F9, it recalculates. Now to clean this up and make it user friendly, you might put a button in here. So we can put a button in here. If I go ahead, I'm going to save it as demo, and I'm going to save it as a macro enabled file called demo. And we can actually put a button in here if I in insert a shape, let's say something like this, right here, and I'll say calculate on it, or some word that gives the user an indication of what to do. Shape effects, so well, we can bevel it, we can shadow it, we can do all sorts of things, but that's not as important as making sure that we have it assigned to appropriate macro. Now what we're going to do is just create a very simple macro and the macro we'll call calc create it the macro visual basic will appear say application dot calculate save it and close the visual basic I'm going to click on my button I'm going to assign the macro, calc. Now every time we push the button, it'll recalculate this. Now things that we can do to finish this would be to appropriate label the axes and the histogram, so we indicate number of observations here. We can make these a little wider to fit the um, labels that we have attached to them, and so on. We could also, if we were trying to compare this to, say, a normal distribution, we could actually put, uh, do a calculation using norm dist to find out how many would norm fall in within a certain bin based on normal distribution and put that behind this as well. So there are a lot of things that we can do with this. This at least give you an idea of what can be done in doing a simulation, developing the corresponding frequency distribution, and his histogram.